What's up, everyone? I'm going to give it a shot at telling you what I think happened last year, where it's all going. And this is all based on the macro trends and everything that we've seen with SLR and primarily the repo markets. Let's go into a little bit of history and show you not only why I think I know what this is going on, but why I've developed a trading strategy around this. Let's go ahead and take a look. So September 17th, 2019 is where we can begin this relevant story. Now, what happened on this day? Well, it was the first day that the Fed Reserve basically started conducting repo operations from the desk in over a decade. So it was a pretty big moment. And the reasoning why is they were scrambling because their rates were falling. They were outside of their own target rate. And that was causing quite the scramble in the market. wanted to alert you from, about a headline from the New York Federal Reserve, which says it will conduct another overnight repo operation tomorrow at 8.15 a.m. Eastern. This follows a similar operation earlier today after overnight repo rates surged above the Fed's target rate in English. Basically, the Federal Reserve is going to take action again for second day in a row for the first time in a decade to calm the money markets after a key measure of short-term lending spiked overnight. D despite the fact, Mike, that the rate has collapsed again today, so uh, still just a rumbling along of this issue. Yeah, they're obviously on alert for the fact that there may be, uh, may be clogs. They want to stand ready to inject cash into, uh, into these uh, overnight uh, funding markets as needed. So I do think it's more of a reassuring of the market at this point. Well, I mean, they need to quell it because it's affecting the effective Fed funds rate, exactly. which is a broader lending rate for the economy. Exactly. So the New York Fed has to ensure that, in fact, the Fed can hit the target rate, which is in a range usually uh, spanning a quarter point. Now, it's been a busy so the rates were skyrocketing, but then they would just drop again the next day. Well, they were injecting money into the cash or they were injecting cash into the markets, which is the exact opposite of what we see happening today. This is their way to com combat COVID due to all the macroeconomic trends that were happening, causing a big strain on the markets. You know, Wall Street's got to do whatever they can to save their money. So then we go to September 19th, two days later, that same week. COVID has just entered into the United States, and the Fed and Wall Street are still scrambling to get their Fed rate target in the proper area. So that is why exactly the Fed stepped into central clearing because none of the other participants would give them the rates they wanted. So they had to get daddy, daddy fed to bet them out yet, bail them out yet again. So at this point in time, deaths per week, COVID at the end tail end of 2019, we're starting to spike, um, you know, right around this time. So it's, it's all interesting as far as the timing is concerned, but they would get another bailout. Of course, they always do with our taxpayer dollars. Let's look at December 23rd, 2019, later that year in 2019. The Federal Reserve Board on Monday approved modifications to the Federal Reserve Bank's National Settlement Service, NSS, and Fedwire Fund Service to support enhancements to the same-day automated clearinghouse ACH service. The board also approved changes intended to reduce the risk that the modified service closings and cutoffs would increase the frequency of delays to the reporting or the reopening of the Fedwire Funds service. So they provided same day enhancements, automated clearinghouse service. Then the Fed's emergency lending evolves. The Fed is using emergency lending powers that invoked during the Great Recession to respond to COVID-19, but it casts a wider net this time. Now, what are they talking about? This was reported in early February of 2020. Basically still scrambling, markets aren't doing good. So then we fast forward to March 27th of 2020, the lender of last resort, the Federal Reserve, with their new Fed monetary policy, SLR, I'm sure you've heard me talk about it, or the supplemental leverage ratio. Now, during this time, I have a little snippet up here. This is 2019, this is a snapshot of the Fed's overnight reverse repo. Now, this policy, the Federal Reserve Emergency Lending, was updated March 27, 2020, and allowed for SLR to come in and take effect. Look at the repo demand that was happening around this time. March 31, 2020, it was 
near historic levels, so they had to get something done to combat this, and SLR was the answer, or other word, and other, otherwise known as 12 CFR Part 217, Regulatory Capital Rule, Temporary Exclusion of U.S. Treasury Securities and Deposits at Federal Reserve Banks from the Supplementary Leverage Ratio. And what this did basically, the bank's liquidity, this freed up the bank's liquidity to where they could use it to reinvest that cash and also lend to other institutions, banks, participants, basically. So the SLR gave them a free pass where instead of having their liquidity locked up where they couldn't do that, it allowed them to leverage, which is exactly what we saw happen in the charts. Uh, as we see multiple pots uh, cooking this morning in Washington, D.C. Hey, Kayla. Hey, Carl, I've been talking to my sources who say that regulators here in Washington are likely to pursue more regulatory changes to free up liquidity for banks to be investing to keep the markets functioning uh, more seamlessly than they are right now. One change that is under consideration right now is the OCC, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, is considering relaxing its 2013 rules over leveraged lending. Now, this is essentially a way to um, take some of these barriers or guardrails off of the banks that would prohibit them from making loans to companies that are being perceived as risky companies, as some of these energy companies, for instance, slide down the credit scale and their capital or their balance sheet becomes less healthy. In this case, if this were to happen, banks would be able to continue extending credit to them. I am told, though, that there is a significant amount of resistance to making this change, largely because when these rules were put in place in 2013, from then until now, they've been seen as effective, and they've actually been seen as keeping banks from extending riskier loans that would have put them in a more precarious position right now. I spoke to a bank executive this morning about what this change, if it were to happen, would do. And in addition to that, what the Fed's announcement earlier today that it would be relaxing banks' liquidity buffers would do, he said those two actions together would be more effective than the Fed even going to negative rates in terms of the capital that it would free up. As for that announcement this morning, uh, a real-time example of what that could potentially do for banks. For instance, if a company and a, a mutual fund company, a money market company like BlackRock were to go to a bank and say, customers are wanting redemptions. We need money on hand. If a bank were to make them a loan to be able to fulfill those customer requests, the bank would have to hold 100 percent of that money as liquidity to back that up. With the change the Fed made this morning, they would no longer have to do that. So that's one example of how this